uh, of the Byzantine Empire. Um, I mean, we're pretty big. We're missing some things that we need. We need to get control of this territory and this territory. Maybe not this one, but this one for sure. Um, I need a chunk of Antioch, I need Jerusalem, I need Alexandria. Um, I was really hoping that I was going to be able to get a claim, let's get right into it here, on the Arabian Empire and pull that all at once. But I'm not certain that I'm going to be able to do that. I think that I rushed a little bit, um, selecting my heir, or I should say my wife, that I married this uh, woman with a weak claim. Um, interestingly enough, it isn't that Mirza doesn't give Muslim opinion anymore, it's that Muslims can't even inherit Mirza. Unless I'm misunderstanding the way Mirza works. Maybe Mirza isn't the one that gets passed down and Sayyid is. And Mirza is just like the shitty ends this generation version of Sayyid. That may be the case. Um, we are plotting to kill this guy. Hoping that we'll be able to invite Princess Mastana into our court. She has an inheritable weak claim. I probably won't marry her myself. Um, if we're able to get her into our court, I will probably marry her to my oldest son and hope that they have children. My oldest son, of course, enormous disappointment, ended up being dull. Um, I made the what I believed to have been a pretty ignorant mistake in that I passed him off to a brawny guardian hoping that he would get brawny and really what I should have done is pass him to a brave guardian so that he would get either brawny or brave and would not get honest or dull. Or maybe the way it works is that if you pass him to someone brave he gets either brawny, brave or honest eliminating the negative outcome of dull. But whatever I didn't do that right now we have all of our troops on this Byzantine fleet we're going for a little trip um, I'm going to press claims on probably well let's see what it depends doesn't it I can press claim on the Duchies of the Isles and I can press claim on Cornwall um, I'm gonna do whichever one is most likely to pass out of my realm first. So this guy is 30 and Cornwall is, well, I guess it doesn't really matter. They're both pretty healthy. This one's sick. Maybe we'll do Cornwall first. Uh, Barcode Battler back again today says, Hey Toons, I think Sayid is the one of real value, but getting your hands on one and matrilinearly marrying him to a daughter is a head scratcher. Uh, I've never really tried to find out myself though yeah I think Sayyid is also the one of value um, however it's I think it's a moot point because I read in the patch notes for 2.7.1 um, and now I didn't read every single point because there's a great deal of it which was um, like bug fixes and things like that which I didn't really get into um, And anyway, it says that uh, it said at one point that Mirza and Sayyid will no longer um, apply to non Muslims. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Let's get back into this. I don't need to look that up to confirm. I'm pretty sure it's right. So, I mean, it's Cornwall or Scotland first. I think we'll do Cornwall first, just because I think it'll be faster. 
Um, let's just make sure I got everything else going on. Oh, I did notice something that I should probably have these on important decisions. And then there's some stuff like this one I always want to take off. We're not going to be restoring the papacy. I'm probably not going to be holding a grand tournament. Well, maybe I could. Maybe I could. I also need to fabricate a claim, I believe, on Venice. And it's a little bit sad. Um, I'm going to release these guys as a tributary. So they will no longer pay me tribute. I'm pretty certain that this puts us in a truce with them. Oh, maybe it does not. I don't see a truce. Can I declare war right away? It looks like I can with no problem. Alright. So, we're going to hopefully get a claim pretty fast here and press that. Um, I think it'll destroy the Republic, but we'll reform it again right afterwards. I mean, that shouldn't be a big deal. Uh, we have no agitation. Here we're building a castle. Here, I think we've been just dumping prestige which I'm going to continue to do because I want to get exalted among men. So, I should be able to do that right now. I mean, unless I can't get it, that I screwed something up. But I'm pretty sure I didn't get it myself earlier. Okay, now I gotta work this out probably. I think I need two, four hundred upgrades. He's already doing something. Something here worth a hundred? No. Something here worth a hundred? No. What about up here? No. Okay, here's something worth four hundred. And here's something worth 400. So that gets my prestige way, 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 way down. All right, let's just wait a month. We are almost through with Prince Castillo. And if I pop back up 100, I mean, then we'll wait a few more months and we'll get down back under. It's March... That would be the 3rd, August 4, yeah, so we'll see what we can do at that point. My daughter, decline. Although, I really want to pass her off to someone who is now diligent and gregarious. Hopefully we'll get uh, something good or indolent. I think that means that it'll either come out charitable or gregarious, right? <laughs> Lost their tongue of a this is get artifact source cap. That's funny. It's tongue of a non-believer or something like that. Or tongue of a liar or dishonest someone or other. Doesn't matter. They've lost it. Okay, here we are. No, that's not us. Where are we? We're still down here. A peasant revolt? For Palermo. It's pretty big too. Um Yeah, we need Greece as well. 
Is there not a closer grease than that? Maybe that's it. I'm just going to keep an eye on my arrow by my fleet when it stops. I know they've arrived. Okay, so this guy is paranoid. We need a different court chaplain. Because I can't have a paranoid court chaplain. It's just stupid. Apparently with um, the new secret societies, when someone passes you a Bible of whatever religion that, uh, that they're trying to get you to convert to, you can throw the Bible away and become paranoid. So you start to see a lot more courtiers um, becoming paranoid because there's some sort of secret religious cult. Now here's the thing as well. Um, that's the reason why I haven't tried to religion convert. Um, anyone with the demand religion conversion, uh, like portrait decision, when you click on their portrait and you say like, ooh, I want you to convert to my religion because apparently uh, what I read on the subreddit is that when you do that, um, they hate you. They, or I shouldn't say they hate you, but they very frequently choose the option that gives them the, um, they secretly convert and they stay as a secret Muslim. And then they start passing around secret Korans to everybody, making other people secret Muslims. Um, and I guess that gets out of control pretty quick. And you can have your entire, uh, empire religion shift under your feet. So I'm going to stick Catholic for the time being until we, uh, convert the Roman Empire, and then we're going to go something more fun. I was thinking Jewish, um, and we'll start converting people little by little, um, territory by territory, probably starting in Greece and Anatolia um, with revocations, uh, and we're going to have a huge civil war happening. Um, I kind of hope that I can get my dynasty to go nuts by that point, because I still have a very small dynasty, you know, we only have 13 living people. At this point in the game state, normally I have hundreds and hundreds of... of, um... members of my dynasty, but I, I guess I haven't really been landing them, or... um... doing my best to make sure that they grow, so we're gonna have to start doing that as well. Uh, we're probably going to do our first few revocations when it comes to that, not on religion, but rather on revolt. We'll use righteous imprisonment to grab kings and um, when we have kings or king titles anyway um, in our pockets, we're going to hold on to those for a little bit. I'm hoping I'm going to be able to go Imperial Administration before it comes to that, although that is almost certainly not very likely. Um, anyway, we'll play it by ear the whole time. Barcode says, you might even want to land some mayor relations as tribal rulers. Not a bad idea. Might be able to get them to take some concubines. Although that's kind of, it's hard for the AI to manage concubines on their own. Um, but it's not impossible either make them little baby factories. I can hear my phone ringing. Give me a second. I'm going to answer that.
Hey, sorry about that. Thanks for your patience. Um, I also realized I forgot to turn the volume up here, so let's do that as well. I don't normally play with the volume this loud, but uh, I've had viewers tell me that it makes a big difference. Although I can't hear any music right now. Oh, here it comes in. Here it comes in. So the chariot races are scheduled to be held soon at the Hippodrome. Eight charioteers from the traditional blue and green teams will be competing for glory on the track. You may choose to throw your weight behind one of these factions and bet on them for a show of support. So it's basically 50-50, hey? Blue or green? Blue or green? Greens it is. It was close, but the green team managed to emerge as a winner after a tense final lap. The triumphant charioteer makes a victory lap to the cheers of the ecstatic crowds. When he passes your seat, he bows his head as a sign of respect and gratitude. Win a bit of gold, get a bit of prestige. I can usurp some titles here. I can get Serbia and Diocletia. All right, we're going to say yes to both of these. All right, so there's du jour Serbia. Jeez, is it ever tiny. I mean, I guess I could just throw that at Greece. He wants Serbia, that's sure. But I can also put it at one of these guys and let them fight. Oh, she's pretty much the only person in here, hey? Otherwise, it's all him. He's way over his domain limit. Who's her heir? Jeez, there's not a lot going on in this family, is there? So I see Irene, I see Alexia. Are they down here? Yeah, there's Irene and Alexia. And we got Basilios Patenix. Who the hell is that? Who the hell is that? That can't be me. What are the Basilioses are there out there? These are Cognates. There's no other Empire titles. It's not him. It's not him. Am I misreading that succession? Let's check her name again. It says, oh, duh, PD in, oh, let's use my right letters. PD in, oh, okay. It's this guy. His name is literally Basilios. I guess it's a little bit le differently spelled than Basilius. That's fine. I don't really care about that. I don't think that'll pass outside of my realm. I just don't want the king of... Uh, Italy to have it. Or the king of Greece, I mean. So we give it to her. And she can hate. 
the king of Greece. All that she wants. Let's see what her opinion is of him. No, that's... Am I looking at that wrong? Yeah, I guess I am. I don't really understand. I think that they should hate each other, but maybe they don't. That does put me over my domain limit a little bit. I see I just finished a castle in Azov, so let's deal with that. We'll give him the barony now. He should switch to... Uh, to um, feudal pretty quick after that. Is she independent, really? There we are. I'm going to dismiss these ships. I'm going to let these guys sit for a bit. Mali has left the defensive pact against me. I don't think I have any cast of spell you to declare a war. Like, he's outside. Doesn't border me, anything like that. That's too bad. Sure, you have a plan for her. It hurts my vision. Oh man, I got maimed. Jesus. Well, I'm still alive. This guy's still alive. We're not going to marry him yet because we're trying to get him um, that good wife, right? Man, this could kill me though. This could pretty easily kill me. Minus two. We'll see. Alright, I'm at 386. Let's find a little tribal territory somewhere to dump some prestige into. 300 for a war camp. And now I should be able to take Exalted Among Men. We'll sit on that one for a bit. The Diplomatic might help me on my vassal limit. But I know that there are a couple of counts that we can shove under something. The Count of La Sitz over here, and Misien. Let's create this duchy. He's heir to the County of York. That's pretty interesting. You say it might be a good idea to count on being dead inside a few years. Maybe undermine a powerful vassal or reduce pretenders. Um, I don't want to die until we can figure out how we're going to deal with that Arabian Empire claim. Wait, did that not fix it? Oh, I'm so stupid. These are tribal vassals. They don't even count towards my limit. Let's look for something else. What else we got here? So, Melatine, way down here. 
part of Armenia. Let's pass that to this guy. And now we're under our vassal limits. I don't think being severely injured is going to kill me, actually. The disfigure is a big pain in the ass. That attraction bonus and the minus four of diplomacy. That's a hassle. Alright, so all these armies should be built up. That should be a slam dunk. Sure looks like it. You're looking for marriage, hey? How about we arrange a betrothal between you and my oldest daughter matrilinearly? Ah, declined. I don't think I can use a favor to force that. Oh, by the way, I also don't think I can use a favor to force marriages over here. So this girl I have to get her out some other way. Because I think that um, it says matrilineal marriage is not allowed to Sunnis. I have to have her in my court to force it. It can't happen in their court. Pretty sure. Well, we don't really need a matrilineal marriage anyway, right? And we were talking about trying this. A favor off of this guy is. 1600 gold it's a big favor not impossible just uh, just a big favor He's not in my territory. Neither is the Duke of Pest. Apulia is a direct vassal. Burgundian Revolt. I can't imprison him because he's uh, immune to hostile action, I guess. Being a rebel like that, I think. Oh, this guy's not in my court. You say, if it doesn't work, is there some useful alternate favor you can get for 1600 gold? Sort of like a worthwhile plan B. Fair point. Um, yes, I think there is. I think it can be used. Um, to force an education. Right? Isn't that the use of a favor? It says... Uh, Force acceptance of an educate child proposal. So if there's some young girl, like this one, who's depressed and really sick, we might be able to force her, who I think will have a strong inheritable claim on the empire of Hispania when this guy dies, right? I'm pretty sure that she's half-sisters with the younger one there. That this was... Oh, maybe she's not going to have a claim at all. He's got a weak on inheritable. Yes, yeah, so that wouldn't work. But that's the that's the theory and practice that this guy or this girl here, we can force education on her, make her Greek, make her Catholic. She may hate her father enough to come to our court anyway, right? And she should have a strong inheritable claim. Or not a strong inheritable, but a weak inheritable claim. Burn the apostate, hey? He's highly suspicious. See you later. Alright, so that peasant revolt is over. It's going to take us forever to get to a thousand.
I'm surprised that it doesn't increase the amount of prestige that you need based on the tier of your title, much the same way that um, build a war chest doesn't increase the amount of gold that you need based on your title. Well, we're still going to war with you, Bavaria. Don't worry about that. Oh, that's interesting. Jeez, this guy's had a rough time if it has me. Siege leader, though. I should probably pass out some of these minor titles. We got Despot. The Sebes Tocrator. An even higher honor than that of Caesar. Can only be granted to close relatives. All right. Oh, and apparently not to children, or is that not showing up? She became uninteractable. Let's try this guy. So I can give it to men. We got Caesar. Can be awarded to anyone. Do I have any factions where Caesar might force somebody out? The one in charge of the palace and the proconsul. I think that should force him out of that uh, independence faction, although these aren't very big at all. Oh, and the Pope decides to go to war with me. Okay, Pope. Um, all right. Mm. Well, I guess Australia is right here. Hey, get the rope. Fit it to the Pope. Hold a grand debate. Sure. Did I write my magnum opus already? No. I do not believe that I have had the esoteric knowledge to do so. I really hope I don't die very soon. Before we can get that... Uh, I think it was planetary astrology I was going for. Yeah. Planetary astrology is up first. An innocent proposal. One day in the Imperial Palace, while surrounded by shouting advisors, waving decrees and edicts that demand your signature, a small man approaches, claiming to be a representative of the Venetoi, the Blues, and I supported the Greens last time. One of the two major chariot teams racing in Constantinople. They no longer have the political influence they enjoyed in the days of Justinian the Great, but they are still popular with the broad masses. You wave your advisors away and decide to hear him out. The man introduces himself as Anaximandros and explains that he has a proposal for you. If you race for the Blues in the Grand Chariot race next week, he and his associates will make certain you win. You both stand to gain from this with the glorious Basilius winning as a champion of the Great Blue Team. Count me in. I practice. Or no cheating. Let's, let's do it. Let's... Let's hope I don't die from it. I don't hope you can't die from it. But we'll try and... Uh, let the debate commence. We'll see what we got going for us here. I 
All right, so we got to pick people here to adjust opinions. I want the mayor to like me more, just in case he gets on landed. He may potentially come to our court. Debating from the back of a chariot. What a man. What a Basilius. So I gained one marshal to the Hippodrome. That's pretty good. You practice hard at chariot racing to better prepare for the upcoming event of the Hippodrome. Despite managing well enough and only falling off the chariot a handful of times, you simply cannot see how you're supposed to beat the other professional racers. When you mention this to Addix and Mandros, the little gnome of a man smiles and tells you not to worry. He assures you, the, assures you that the greens, your main opponents, will not be a problem, and the other blue racers have been instructed to let you win. You had better be right about this. If I made the look the fool, I swear I will not be the only one to suffer. And here's the day of the race. It's a fine day for racing, and the Hippodrome is packed with people wanting to see their Basilius conquer, or fail miserably in the attempt. Spiridon, the star greens, looks at you with scorn as your chariots line up. I shall endeavor not to embarrass you too much, your Imperial Majesty, he says through clenched teeth. The tempest blew, and the race begins one by one. The green chariots fall apart and topple all over, giving you a clear path. Only Spiridon's armored chariot remains of the green team, but as your blue allies move to block him, their chariots disintegrate as well. It seems that both teams had the same idea. Still, you skillfully navigate through the wreckage and manage to hold off Spiridon long enough to win the race. Victory, but not thanks to Annex and Mandros. 100 prestige, 25 gold, and it's over. Oh, well, that's interesting. Lombardy inherited all of this. I'm the winner of the Grand Debate. Bavaria is out of the Defensive Pact. And here's a chance to make this kid brawny. Come on, finish this battle. Finish this battle. Damn it, he rejoined. I probably shouldn't be assaulting with, um... Oh, whoops. I shouldn't be assaulting with levies, so I'm gonna stop doing that. We're gonna siege down the last few. Ah, <sighs> arranged marriage. This woman with money? Nope. We're still at 195 a month. I'm just going to let this grow. I also think, um, oh, here we go. So finally I'm scarred now. I'm still disfigured. Raiders in Bruges. Hey, Super Sam. Um, adult audience? Too much incest? I'm not sure what you mean, Super Sam. If it's about the Twitch thing, I just put that on so I can swear and stuff and not have to worry about little kids getting their ears hurt and stuff like that. Okay, so there we are, exalted among men. I think I have no more potential ambitions. But Exalted Among Men should cheer everybody up a great deal. Not him. Let's check out my despots. Ah, it's only plus 5. That's funny. Paragon of Virtue is plus 25. Exalted Among Men is only plus 5. I guess that's supposed to be easier to get or something. 
And it's only 10 years of plus 5. Well, that might not have been... I don't know if it was going to take me 10 years to get back up above 10k. Which I think is the cap for prestige. I think you get... What is 1,000 a cap? Let's see. What's my prestige limit in this guy? Plus 5 at 1,000? I don't think that's going to go up anymore. Here's my claim on the Republic of Venice. Wow. I was not expecting that. Oh, let's hold on for a second. There's a weak claim. There's a weak claim. And this woman here has a weak claim. Hmm. What are the chances of, uh, I don't think I can see the election. In a sense, though, of brick tone is the next guy up. He's 43. None of these except for Malois is a kid. I'd have to assassinate. Almost every single one of these over a long period of time. Because, like, this family. Okay, so he only has two living members, but when he dies out and there's no men, there's just going to be a new family involved. I think I'm going to go for it. Now, why can't I prison her? She's part of an Aquitanian revolt. Maybe that's why. He said, How good is your counselor at faking claims? Check what the percent chance of it firing is. It might not be worth it for such an unhealthy character. It might fire pretty soon after for your heir. Um, so, my chancellor, I already took it, uh, fabricates claims at 20% per year. Uh, my current plot, my high priority plot right now, is at 134. I should actually see if... Well, I don't have the money to invite anyone anymore, do I? But we might be able to move our Chancellor a little bit. To convince some people here and there. Oh, I didn't realize I had a search for the artifact. I just saw that when I right-clicked on him that we got search for the artifact. I didn't even notice. All right, I'm going to stop spying on who I'm spying on. I'm going to start spying on this guy. I'm going to write my magnum opus. Oh God, it's going crazy here, isn't it? Oh, that's nice. He adopted feudalism. You say that artifact, is that the tongue of... Error message liar, that the one? I'm not sure. We don't know what artifact it is until after it generates one. It could be. In fact, those tongues of whatever aren't bad artifacts because they're passives and they just sit in your box. I don't think I have one like that. Um, but they're not you know, like in the main. You don't have to equip to get them, right? Um, I'm writing my manual opus. I'm going to take off my heart seeker for the time being. I'm going to equip the handgun. Just to bump my learning up one more. Hey, Rikers, question. How did you bankrupt the Byzantine Empire? Yeah, I just fired a claim on Venice here. So I'm going to have to press it pretty quick. In fact, I should probably get my retinues back into a position where they can do so. 
I'm going to do them in two different paths here. Just so that hopefully we don't end up getting hit with a huge supply limit. <clears throat> okay. He's telling me that this guy is a terrible apostate. 2130. Pretty sure this just goes down to the next guy that controls the city of Mao. Yeah. So, I mean, once we finish our... Oh, we've already won our war against the Pope. So he's... Pope's going to help us get out of the hole there. Looks like I have another ambition. What's this? Well, it's definitely not going to be to see the realm prosper. So let's choose War Chest. I don't want to extort my subjects, so we're just going to click this off here. I don't want to see those warnings. Shut the gates. I guess that's because there's measles, measles in Rome right now. Raise ships, then move them to the strait. Ooh, yeah, you got a good plan there. Well, we're still a while off before our retinues come in. The du jour Lombard Tuscan War over Verona. Wait, who's he trying to kill? Some, I don't know who the hell. Okay, so we're going to go with astrology. And when it asks us, we're going to say uh, planetary. This looks like a chariot thing. Another proposal. As you walk at a brisk pace through an empty corridor in the Imperial Palace on your way to another tiring meeting with your advisors, you hear a faint whisper from one of the window curtains. After readying your dagger, you pull aside the curtains to reveal Anax and Mandros, the gnome man who recruited you in the chariot racing. I should have you drawn and quartered, you hiss at the man. The entire blue team had their chariots fall from under them. Annex and Mandro smiles at you and speaks, Calm yourself, Majesty. Your chariot held together, did it not? I have a new and cunning plan for the next race. One that simply cannot fail. Your epic victory will be celebrated for centuries to come. Uh, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm pretty sure it fails. Uh, I got a, f a marshal out of it last time, so I want to see what I get out of it this time. I've never done these um, Byzantine Empire... Um, events. I've never controlled this as my primary title. Um, Riker saying, just saying, that's what I would do. Well, I, I don't want to incur too big of a... Oh, wait a second. Do I have another army kicking around somewhere? Aha. Um, I mean, I am going to have to bring ships in. We're going to press that claim right away. And as soon as I get rid of them, they just love Bruges, man. Okay, so I gain one intrigue this time. That's pretty valuable. You resume your chariot training, and although you are an even better racer now, it still may not be enough to beat the best of the competitors, many who have been driving chariots since early childhood. And Eximandros approaches you to tell you of his new scheme. Behold, Majesty, he says, and produces a small bottle from within his cloak. One drop of this concoction, which my associates and I acquired only at great cost, might add, is enough to send a man running to the latrines within minutes. Each member of the green team will be offered some spiced wine by the quartermaster, a man in our employ, just before the race. Sure, I'll take the intrigue. And I win, but no thanks to Anax and Andros. <laughs> Once again, you ride into the Hippodrome in your chariot to the chairs of the people. It looks like nearly all of Constantinople has turned up for this momentous race. Spiridon, your old nemesis, is instructing the rest of the green team when their quartermaster offers them a sip of wine to fortify their resolve. All accept this offer, except for Spiridon. Instead, he loudly proclaims that he will offer his wine to the blue team who will need it more. Before you can object, the other blue racers happily share the wine between them. The trumpets blare and the race begins. Within seconds, the first few racers leap off their chariots, run to the bathroom. Soon only you and Spiridon remain. 
Fortune favors you, however, as Spiridon collides with the last racer to abandon his chariot. This delays him enough to grant you victory. It's Laxidus. That's right. This, this might be a Greek thing. It might be a Greek thing. It might be a Greek Byzantine thing. Um, I've had, definitely had control of the Byzantine Empire before. I thought it was because it's as my primary title right now. Oh, to the plot, to the plot, to the plot. Um, okay, that's pretty cool. So my, my apprentice just finished his apprenticeship. I'm going to pick my son as my next apprentice. We'll get him into the Hermetic Society early, which will be nice. It'll be good for us later that we won't have to go through some of the earlier steps after he takes over. Might be able to get his, his, uh, Magnum Opus written before, sooner rather than later, right? The only other son is, my spare is four years old right now, so, I mean, we'll see what happens. This is almost certainly going to revert. Alright, so both guys are in position. Now we need the ships. No. The ships. 196, is that enough? Yeah, that's more than enough. Anything that gets to undo some of the dull trait must be worth doing. Um, I think... Oh, look! I caught those fucking raiders. We wiped them out. This guy wants to invite me to a plot to kill who? Hey, Dad. Will you help me kill my rival? Okay, son. I guess I will. Ha ha ha. So we're going with the planetary astrology first. We're going to have to fight them anyway, one way or the other, I guess. We're just going to group this up, get the commanders as good as possible. Patient in the center. No. Lead the center in the center. Flanker on the right. Put the patient on the left. That's good enough. We're going to declare a war for our claim on Venice. Oh, Barcode Battler says, they grow up into full-blown murder, murder so quickly. That's true. It seemed like only yesterday when he was torturing rats. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so this should be over pretty quickly. We're already at 41. Oh, my reputation is ruined. He knows that we're trying to kill him. That's like the third time I think my plot's been exposed, right? Although we're not uh, in the red anymore. Let's see what kind of low-level guys I can add here. 41... Uh, 37, that's fine. Okay, and that count? How much does it take to sway his opinion? 15, that's brilliant. So let's put our diplomat on the next guy. Ooh. help from those around me. That plus one from Exalted got me back up above 15, even with the disfigured now. So I should always have well-written papers. It's 60%, 92, 
There's 100. So the war's over. Wolgast tribe was most likely to fall from Pomerania. You'd think he'd take it as a massive compliment that the Emperor even acknowledges his existence. What an ingrate. Okay, so I gained the Duchy of Venice off this guy. Right? So Venice has now been destroyed. Very sad. There's no Venice. Um, he is my vassal. We are going to, of course, give him uh, the Duchy of Venice. Now he pays money directly to me. And one more checklist is checked off of our checklist um, for to be able to reform the empire. So let's grab this one last thing off of... Wait, what is it that I'm missing exactly? I thought it was this, but I think it's this. I think I have to declare war on the Pope for this castle, not this territory. So we're going to do that first. <sighs> Fucking god damn it. All right. Sure we'll burn him. Oh, what the hell? Yeah, now what are you going to do, buddy? Alright, we're going to go back to the Pope now. We should be able to declare war on him for the holdings in Ravenna. He said, Duchy Ferrera, Jerusalem, and a few others. Yeah, I'm also missing um, Antioch and Alexandria, which are all controlled by the Arabian Empire. So I've been holding off on that because we're trying to get control of the entire Arabian Empire all at one time. Um, not very successfully, I might add, but we are trying. Okay, so our... Oop, let's pause and have a look. Our last magnum opus, Planetary Astrology, was just completed. We did get the Quality 4. I thought that it was almost impossible to not get Quality 4 with 40 learning, but uh, it's nice to see that we were successful. Um, What do you favor Arabia for a kid to betroth? No, what I did do, which was a mistake, was I married this woman who has a weak claim on the Arabian Empire, which when, and you can see she's 35, um, when this guy was actually a kid, because he's 32, so I married her when she was like 16, he would have been like 13 or something, and I wasn't able to press her claim. I was perplexed. Um, and I think it has to do with some sort of... Um, like Muslim succession thing where you can't press the claims of the weak claims of women against uh, Muslim children the way that you can Catholic children right because I don't think that this can ever be anyway I'm not exactly sure what the reason was but for whatever reason I was not able to um, declare war against him for the Arabian Empire. So I've missed it on one generation, right? My oldest son, um, Castillo, um, the dullard, although he's got good learning, he just happens to be kind of a dummy. He's not the sharpest knife in the drawer, you know. Um, our plan now is we want to marry him to this woman right here. 
she has a weak inheritable claim on the Arabian Empire. Um, and we're, we've been trying to kill this guy for... I mean, since he was a kid, so probably 18 years now. We just haven't been that lucky. Um, but we're going to keep on trying until we murder him. And then we're going to spend... I should probably keep 680 gold in my treasure at all times, just so I can grab her with the favor very quickly. Um, and invite her into my court, marry her to my son. Hopefully she squeezes a little kid before she dies. Um, and then that kid will have a weak claim that will not be inheritable. However, then we can start assassinating in the Arabian Empire, get some kids on the throne, and press the weak claim all at once. That's the idea. Isn't she a bit old? 27 and you got a small dynasty? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess she is. I do have my backup at 4. Um, I've seen children out of women up to 40 before, so I don't think it's outside their own possibility. Um, if it ends up looking like that's not going to happen, my idea is for my spare here, um, we're probably going to go west instead of east and see if we can't get something in Hispania. Um, although we do have about a hundred years here before um, the whatchamacallits show up, the Aztecs, so we'll just have to see how we can do. I'm over my vassal limit by one, I gotta fix that. Oh, one child needs an education, hey? So, I want to give them to someone who's kind, and that's a priority because of the idolizer. I don't want frail, no matter what. Zealous or erudite is just fine. Um, Turkish hordes are also, I think, on delayed random. Unless, yeah, Turkish Conquerors... Oh, Turkish Conquerors are, are on random. Um, I mean, I guess I can play these on random. That's not a big deal. I haven't done this game. Uh, I've taken our consideration for the next campaign. Um, it doesn't really matter to me what time they show up at, right? So, um, maybe the delayed random isn't that big a deal. And I can change my my rule set saved to put it just on random. Um, the major epidemics I did change from deadly down to dynamic. I was finding that it was unplayable and since the last patch on deadly. Um, I've got a couple of VODs up actually where in fact I should make sure that I upload them to YouTube before they run off the screen. Um, I think the game is unplayable on deadly right now. That uh, it just ends up being so that the black death gets out of control. Um, and you, and it's, it's an unplayable game state. Uh, I think we're gonna go with kind and brave. Are any of these guys diligent? That'd be the money shot. I don't see anyone as diligent. <sighs> That's a bummer, actually. Let's have a look if there's anyone in the whole world who is kind, brave, and diligent. Inside our diplomatic range, join court for free. What are the chances? Apparently zero. Um, there's this Nubian band guy who's infirm and gout. That doesn't fill me with confidence. Uh, but he's the only one. I'm going to send him a little bit of money and invite him into our court because he has all the traits that we want. Oh, I need to track down... Now, I think because this guy is now a feudal, he's counting towards my vassal limit. Um, I don't think I can just slide him under anybody else. I do have a Count of Benevento. I might be able to slide under Apulia or something. That would be fine. Azov as well, it appears. No, I think he's still tribal. Yeah, he's got the brown band, so he's a tribal vassal. Um, let's slide Benevento under her. For the time being. 
Um, and then that's sorted, and our vassal limit's back under control. Oh, did I forget France up again? Nope. But, apparently, these guys landed a little while ago, and I was not paying enough attention. What do I think's faster? Ghent to Zealand to Holland? That's 21. And then... 27. This is... 26, and then 19. Yeah. We'll go from here. He said, is that Nomad Agitation up there? Yeah, I can't do anything about this one because he doesn't have the tech to boost up his hill fort. And because he's tribal, I can't uh, build a new holding. I can't build a castle in here. Um, if he was feudal, I could build the castle anyway, which I've been doing as, as these guys push back. I've been building castles. Um, yeah, so this territory almost certainly is gonna, is gonna revert. You don't like it? Here you go, man. We'll just throw it underneath the rug. I should check if I can ransom anybody here. Six characters for 300, that's not bad. Um, let's assign that kid to the brave, kind, diligent, crazy uh, Mia Fizite. And we're going to pick learning for him, which I think is appropriate, right? He's not my oldest, but uh, we're probably going to land him. I don't know if I should land him like in Cornwall or what. Or if I should try and find somewhere tribal for him and hopefully he takes some concubines. You say, how have the secret religious societies been at this size? So I know that they exist because I'm seeing lots of random courtiers pull paranoid, right? Um, and this typically happens, like this guy never used to be paranoid. It might have just been random, but I, I do think that there's a secret society. I've done zero demand religious conversion um, because I read that that uh, contributes um, to secret societies developing. I've already demanded, don't worry. There we go. Alright, so we've got this under our control again. Uh, it actually belongs to this to this bishop, and that is one more duchy under control. So, uh, and actually, let's split this and send the other half walking up. I don't know this way. I guess we'll go the long way around this time. I want them to refresh a little bit anyway. These other armies, I don't think caught anything. So we're going to dismiss them. Let's check our retinue cat. Eh, we can add a couple more. I'm just going to send them up here. So they don't get swamped by some raider. Yeah, so apparently when you do... Um, like, oh, you know, so-and-so, I'm going to demand a religious conversion. When they say yes... Apparently, they get an option to secretly convert rather than actually convert. So if you do demand religious conversion, stuff gets out of control. Um, I do believe that the high intrigue, or pardon me, not high intrigue, the high learning events that you can get where, oh, so-and-so wants to convert you and you say, or some courier comes to you saying, so-and-so tried to convert me and you go back to them and say, oh, don't worry, I'll talk to them and you convince them with debate. Um, I'm pretty sure that's like a so-called true conversion, right? Um, I haven't had that very happen very often in this generation, but we did have it, ha it happen uh, fairly often in our last generation. Um, and in our last generation as well, we definitely did have a couple secret Bibles passed to us, uh, mostly Orthodox Bibles. 
So I'm kind of hoping that it's under control. Um, I'm not really worried about any secret religious stuff right now. I'm not doing any religious control whatsoever. Um, I am Catholic. I don't give a shit about Catholicism. I'm only Catholic because I need it to form the SBQR. That explains a few rashes, a few places, a few Christian rashes. I don't know what you mean, ACX, by Christian rashes. Um, so he's going up that way. He can go the usual way, and that should be fine. No, I'm sure he's up to something. Yeah, any Christian to SBQR doesn't matter. Um, what I kind of, I mean, I tend to hate Christian religions anyway. I kind of think they're super boring. After I form the Empire of Rome, I think I'm going to go Jewish so I can get, uh, I can get another achievement for forming the Kingdom of Israel. And, um, you know, re like building the third temple and reinstalling the Colbin Godel or whatever it's called. Um, and it also gives me Holy War cast his belly on all the Christians, on all the Muslims, on all the pagans, so I'm pretty open there in war. I don't think... I don't think that Jews um, can call great Holy Wars, which is a bummer, um, and might actually significantly slow me down. Um, that's a problem that I had in my last huge campaign as Cathar, where... I felt really limited by um, how I was. I didn't have Crusades or Great Holy Wars available, and I ended up going Germanic Pagan, and then found it completely overpowered anyway. Um, after I do like some Jewish stuff down here, uh, I might switch to like Zoroastrian, become the Seoshint, um, and then finally go as I move east. Each new religion as I go east is going to be a whole new wave. Um, I really like Zunist, so I might stay Zunist. Yeah, I don't think you can do Greater Holy Wars. I was just looking for... Let's throw it on and uh, have a peek here. Look, here's some Jews. I just passed a couple. Where are you at, Jews? There you are. Um, no, he can grant the invasion, Cassus Belly. And he can call for a great holy war, eh, so that's just fine. Right, we might try that out. Oh yeah, sure, but they'll call great holy wars, and I'll get to fight them. And as long as the land goes to someone in my empire, I don't really care, right? Um, even if I get it or not, right? It's not a big deal to me. Looks like Bavaria is still having some trouble here, hey? He's got... Three different wars going on. He's super weak. He's going to be end up coming down here. Anyway, we are going to go uh, do Cornwall, do the Isles. Because uh, those are, I think, the claims that I wanted to press while well, I can still press them. Because she's starting to get a little bit old. Uh, this guy, I don't know why I can press this claim. The Chief of Azov. It says he has a weak claim on it. Against Regencies. He doesn't have a regency. I don't know what the deal is, but it says I can press it, so we're going to start with uh, Cornwall, and then we'll go up to the Isles. And I got to stop spending money because I want to hit that. No. Separate bedchambers, rekindle our love. Constantinople prospers, that's nice. 
I gain stress, so let's make ourselves a potion. Iron and iron? Sure. Oh, perfect. My guys are hardly even out of here, it. So, the reason that I want to fight this guy, and I've been wanting to fight him for a long time, is he has the Iron Crown of Lombardy. And I want it. But I don't really know how to get a hold of it. Um, with, like, inheritance shenanigans. I'm not sure that I'll be able to get, like, a matrilineal marriage. Is that even possible? Yeah, he says no for his youngest son. So, we are going to imprison him. 11% chance he almost certainly will revolt. He does control a fair bit of territory here. He's got territory here. I know he has territory up here. Nothing else, I think. Anyway, we're just going to go for it. Let's hope that he revolts. Brilliant. He revolted. Mission successful. Okay, so I lost stressed. Oh, I thought I had depressed. Okay, so we didn't get it that time. Um, I don't really want to win the war. One sunny afternoon, you enjoy a quiet moment away from your advisors under the shade of a tree in the palatial garden. Looks quite nice, doesn't it? That's a nice bit of art up here. A sound from above catches your attention, and as you look up, you spot Annex and Mandros, the chariot gnome hiding on a branch. I swear this is supernatural. Your grace, before I suffer your wrath, I ask that you hear me out. He scurries down from the tree and gives you his new offer. Fate may have conspired against us in the past, Majesty, but this time my plan is foolproof. He flashes a toothless grin. Third time's the charm. What do you say? It had better be. I'm in. Oh, this guy a favor? Ah, uh, yeah, sure. Give me the money. Pause. What's my supply limit here? Am I really screwed up? 15% attrition? Yeah, I really screwed up. I should have looked at that before. I hope I can get out of there. It almost certainly is going to tick before I get out. Yeah. Good going me. Um, I'm going to raise a couple of troops up here to take care of that. And uh, I guess some troops down here just to kind of help out, you know? Gonna fight him in Verona. He wants a place in your council. Okay, as what? As my prostrator. Well, it'll do for a time, that's fine. So he brings you to a small workshop in one of the seedier districts of Constantinople. Here he explains they will weaponize your chariot. While you watch, the craftsmen install a pair of extendable metal blades into its chassis, intended to shred the wheels of any chariot adjacent to yours. You train extensively with the chariot until you have mastered its new weapons, and as you are about to leave for the Hippodrome on the eve of the race, he hands you a flanged mace for good measure. Gain one marshal. Okay, so this is the day of the third race. I got two martial and one entry go to this already. Uh, this is it, the final race of the season. The Hippodrome is filled to capacity and a deafening roar greets you as you ride your chariot into the arena. You line up next to Spiridon, your old foe from the greens and the crowd's favorite. Your majesty, he says, and spits on the ground. Ooh, that's a bit rude. I used to bet on your team, you know. The trumpets blow and the race begins, but it seems you weren't the only one to have brought arms. Everything turns into a huge melee, as all the drivers hack and slash at each other, using handheld and chariot-mounted weaponry. Annex and Mandros has played both sides against the other, 
There can be no other explanation. The situation escalates further when the agitated crowds enter the fray. You spot Annex and Mandros climbing into the Spiridon's chariot, and the two of them escape the Hippodrome. Oh, wait a second. Through the... Through the... Through the what? Through the what? Aw, oh, jeez. Through the what? Um, this is going to be Legacy of Rome, I think. Pretty sure this is a Legacy of Rome. Um... -dum -ba -dum, Monks and Mystics. Way of Life. What's this going to be under? That's Sons of Abraham. I'm looking in the events files right now. I want to know what the rest of this says. Roman events text. Okay, that's probably it. Uh, search. Race. Find next. Find next. Okay. So, apparently it's not covered. This is just triumph, victory expected, informed, restoration, that's fine. Um, Hibernia. Okay, I don't know what half of this stuff is, but none of it is this event, so we'll close it. Um... Events, horse load, Ramadan events, Pope for polygamy, what? Monks and mystics, lifestyle events, I don't think it's that. Okay. Um, I can't see this because of the font mod that I'm using, but let's not waste any more time. I'm going to assume that uh, they escaped through the hallway. Let's chase them. The chase is on. You leave the madness of the Hippodrome behind and steer your chariot out into the streets of Constantinople in hot pursuit of Spiridon and the traitor Annex Mandros. With the blades unfolded, your chariot smashes through market stalls and pottery in the narrow back alleys while hissing Annex and Mandros tries to give you a taste of the whip without success. You rush past the Hagia Sophia and on the Augustian Square, as terrified priests scramble to get out of the way. With a sharp turn, you continue forward on the Mezzi, the main thoroughfare, and sped, speed past ox carts and the Forum of Constantine before Spiridon abruptly turns north, towards the Golden Horn. He finally loses control of his chariot at the docks and it crashes into some stacked crates. You step out of your chariot and draw your mace. I can give no mercy, or I can show mercy. You know what? I'm kind and charitable. I think I should just kill them. <clears throat> gained 100 prestige, lost 50 piety, and gained cavalry leader. Okay, so I'm going to assume that if I had shown mercy, it would have been the other way around. You know, uh, lose 50 prestige, gain 50 piety, or 100 piety. Um, Spiridon has been impaled on a nearby fence, and his dead eyes glare at you accusingly. Annex Mandros, however, lies wheezing on the docks with a broken leg. He curses your name as you approach him with your mace. Why do all this, you ask him? What could you possibly gain? The little man grins wryly at you. Eons ago, there were four chariot racing teams. The blues, the greens, the whites, and the reds. And the two most powerful teams all but absorbed the two weakest. Who speaks of the whites today, or the reds? Where's their glory? The domination of the blues and the greens had to end, Majesty, at any cost. If my nephew Spiridon and I could get them to wipe each other out, you've heard enough. And with a single blow, your mace forever silences Annex and Mandros. One less headache for me. Now I kind of wish that I'd gone Mercy, because, I mean, we could have put the whites and the reds back in. That would have been nice. Alright, um... Who am I going to spy on here? I should probably... Man, this guy is so boring. Let's just leave him and try and pick off one of the look one of these other ones here. He's almost dead anyway. Let's spy on him. Oh, why won't it let me spy on him? Is it because he's incapable? I do find it interesting that I have that secretly convert to Miaphysite. Let's spy on this guy.
A donation to my war chest, 200 gold. Thank you very much. The Countess of Cleve is my niece. Who wants to marry this guy? No. That's not happening. Although... I thought that I gave him the particular guardian that was kind, diligent, and brave, right? Did that guy die? Oops, didn't have my... I think I just unpaused. Kind, diligent, brave. Um, yeah, it appears that guy just died. That kind of sucks. Um, alright, here's what we're going to do. We're going to look for someone who is kind and brave. That's the idea now. Oh, I'm kind and brave. I'll be your huckleberry. Alright, that'll be fine. If I die, I'll know about it. Alright, I hope this guy goes back up to Lombardy. Oh, for real? No, stop asking. Wait, am I fighting with France somewhere? Did I come down with France? I don't think I did. This is... Yeah, I don't think I fought with France. That's weird that it won't let me raise them. Oh, it's because they're right here. I'm so dumb. There we go. Gains Iridite, loses Idolizer. So we dodge Frail. And then he gets onto boats. Yeah, Stetton's getting fucked next, I'm telling you.
<sighs> okay. Okay, so good. He's gone back to siege Lombardy. Well, she's not suspicious. So she's probably not a Satanist, but let's burn her anyway. Because, I mean, she could be a Satanist. We don't have definite proof that she's not. Thank goodness. Who just died? Gerard. I think I inherited a bunch of gold off of him. Uh, we just inherited a bunch of gold off of him. I'm going to spend a little bit of it trying to upgrade this hill fort for this numbskull. Okay, that one's capped. This one's training grounds. Raiders in Azov. What does he give me? 957. Crimea gives me 59. That's pathetic, Crimea. How are you not... Because he's orthodox and this is... No, he should totally be able to convert to a... Why are you staying tribal? You have a stone hill for it. You're probably retarded. Go figure. Um, what else do I have around here? We got Anatolia. Yeah, actually. Let's open Greece. I bet you he's going to be happy to see that. I may actually just let them sit in the Sea of Azov for a bit. Okay, we need to get her an educator. I'm gonna want to give her someone who is. Oh, so I've been giving shrewd. But let's check the wiki to see what the interruption trade is. Hey, General Von Gelra, welcome back. Says he's a traditionalist, don't force the poor guy into the modern world. I want him to have a castle. I mean, there are some pros. Tribal vassals don't count towards my vassal limit. Um, but the amount of levies that I can raise off them is abysmal, so... Anyway. Uh, patient is the interrupt trait for curious. I think I'd just rather have someone shrewd, so we'll look up shrewd and just hope it works. Um, shrewd brave, that's me. I'm also kind. It looks like Princess Xena. I'm going to be educating you. Now this one had the destined fighter trait, so we're going to throw her on... Martial education. My sons will always be learning. Um, and this one here, actually, we should get you a matrilineal marriage. Are there any good traits we can pick up? Ooh, we can pick up ugly. Just kind of browsing. There's a quick, but he's eight. There's a strong right here. That's money. There's a strong right here. 
This guy has a claim for Armand. This guy has no claim, but it would give me a non-aggression pact with a bishop. He's got the flu, he's got nothing. Let's pick this one. Got a good chin on this one, though. That's Princess Joanna. Paranoid, shrewd, gregarious. Decent. Decent. Oh, Cornwall left the pact. Now is exactly the time when I should be declaring war on her. Instead, I'm farting around trying to grab this crown. She's got agnatic cognatic seniority. So why is this on-landed guy her heir instead of her daughter? That doesn't make sense. Ooh, we got another apostate. Well, this guy's a stutterer. So I guess we're helping the gene pool. Say 42 learning. Christ, the tech must be unbelievable. Yeah, it's pretty good. I'll show you. We got 3.29, 3.6, 3.4. It, it certainly is clicking by. Um... Oh, I should pick up this other level of Majesty. We're going to go to Majesty 5 first in Culture. That's our next goal for Imperial Administration. Um, and then as we... I mean, hopefully by then we reform the Roman Empire. Um, are you Catholic Byzantine for the sweet free claims? Yes, I'm Catholic. No, I do not have the Pope vassalized. He kind of hates my guts. Um, Where is the Pope anyway? I, is he even landed anymore? Why well, doesn't hate me too bad? Um, doesn't like that I'm a magus. Uh, we're not the same culture anymore. To be honest with you, I, I need to read a guide or something. I don't understand how to vassalize the Pope. I know that's a thing. That you can vassalize the Pope, but... Uh, I don't know what the deal is. Probably have to grant him land again. But I don't want it to go to him and be independent, right? That'd be a bummer. I should probably build a city here in Rome. I'm going to hold off for a bit. I want to save my gold for favors. Can't you just appoint an anti-pope and then war the false pope? Is that how you do it? Make an anti-pope, press his claim, and if you are an empire, he becomes your vassal. Is it that easy? To pick a pope and make him the anti-pope? And then he's your vassal? Is that all it takes? After I sort this out, and after I do Cornwall, because um, she's getting on in years, man. I think she's going to die, and then this is not going to be able to press this claim at all. So this is kind of a priority for me. I mean, I know it's stupid. It's only two counties, right? But, I mean, I landed the guy exactly for that purpose. So I'd like to take care of it. I guess I don't really need all of my retinues down here. I could send, like, half up. So he died. And his genius son... Oh, I guess this is one of those people that I went to arrest and then they fled.
I lost some ingredients. One, two, three, four. Okay. Because who died? Oh, this guy Wealth in my court died. Gotcha. And it says, among others. I mean, some of this stuff, I guess I gotta kinda clean this out, hey? Like, why do I have an iron mace, right? I guess I can put Heart Seeker back on, because I don't need the learning from this right now. I don't know what I want to dump or who I want to dump it to. I guess I just hold on, on to someone until I need like a little opinion wedge somewhere. This lowborn courtier left you some cooking ingredients, my emperor. Great, bring them to me. Well, we would have, but we somehow managed to lose them. Yeah. Yeah, that happened. Oh, I lost my court. There's a couple things I'm not taking care of here. Let's put them on thrift. I need a court chaplain. So I got a 21 that loves me. I mean, that ain't bad, right? Got my apprentice, who also loves me. Has the great pox. Does that mean that I lost my physician as well? My physician isn't that good anymore. Oh, no, he's still the best. Oh, he's hired mercenaries, this guy. I can usurp the Duchy of Alania. Done. Who do we give it to? Oh, shoot. Um, because I clicked off Nomad Agitation, I'm not seeing it anymore. All of this, I'm pretty sure, is going to revert. Yeah. Okay, so how do I turn Nomad Agitation back on? Um, we cannot afford this. What do you mean I'm the emperor? What do you mean I can't afford it? In the ledger, enabled disabled alerts. Or do you mean this ledger? Our claimants, our titles, possible inheritances. No, it's not that one. Is it here in message settings? The side ledger scroll down. Okay, close. Disabled alerts. There we go. Yeah, so I only need to put one more castle here in Kuma and we're good. It was too good to be true. Now I'm depressed. Let's, uh... Ooh. There's something I didn't do that I really should have done, was to choose a hermetic art. 
astrology and studied at the stars. Also brew myself a potion. Combine the two is fine. Hey, Lucietano. How long will you be at 100% war score before you notice? The point is not winning the war. The point is sieging Milano over and over and over again. I'm not trying to arrest this guy, right? I'm trying to I'm trying to steal his crown, right? This is what we want. This is the whole point of the war. It's going good. I think I'm doing all right. This is the point of the war is to steal this crown. Um, not to like win or anything like that. So I'm just, I'm sieging territories. And uh, after we siege this down, we're going to probably go off and siege something else for a little while. Um, I can gain diligent. Don't I already have diligent? Ooh, no, I don't. I can gain erudite. Oh, let's gain diligent. I like that. Oh, wait, I'm dumb. I forgot all about these guys. Um, yes, be more charitable, please. Oh, she became content. That's not a big deal. Do I catch him? I think I catch him. Does the crown do anything special? Um, it is a quality 5 crown. There are very few items that are quality 5. Most are quality 2 or quality 3. Um, there are some things, like this is quality 3, Golden Sword, Crown of Majesty, and Emerald Scepter he just got from an event recently, I'm sure. Um, it shows you how smart the AI is, hey, that he's using the Ruby Scepter instead of the Emerald. Um, but this is a quality 5 item, so it is significantly good. It gives plus 10 to Vassal Opinion and lowers your short reign years by minus 5. Um, that's the kind of advantage that you can only get with... Uh, like maximum level of majesty for short reign years so yeah that's pretty good and I'm, and I'm fairly certain that it stacks with the majesty tech bonus so it's one of like the the best items in the game and I really want it so um, are there any other quality 5 items I think I might have a couple uh, Ark of the Covenant is quality 5 um, gives morale damage morale defense Monthly Prestige, Monthly Piety, Stewardship, and a same religion bonus of plus 10. Um, you have to be in a Christian or an Israelite group to be able to use it. Um, so I got that going for me. This one here is quality 3. Uh, but I've got a feeling that there is some quality 5 version of this, right? Uh, most of the Madam Opuses, when they're well done, are quality 4. If your learning is shitty, when you make the opus, uh, it can be quality 3 or quality 2 or even quality 1 if your learning is poor enough. So sometimes if you're in the Hermetic Society, it's better for you just not to make a magnum opus. Um, if you know it's going to come out shitty, just um, just wait. I think you need like 25 plus in order to get like plus 3 or quality 3 or quality 4. Um, if you're over 30, I've never seen someone do quality 4 before. Hey, thanks for the follow. 
uh, General Von Galbra. I appreciate that. Um, I'm trying to think of any other Quality 5 items that I've seen. I mean, there is a wiki page that you can go and check out. I think that, um, spoiler alert, like, has all of the, the um, treasury items on it and artifacts like that. But uh, this is just sort of what I've discovered. I don't pay... I mean, I check the wiki fair enough, but I do try and actually play the game too. I think I might have to fight him. What title did you start as? I started as the Count of Barry in 769. Um, so it's 909 now. I guess we've been about... I mean, if I just mouse over here, it'll tell me how long it's been. 140 years of game time have passed, and this is the territory that I control. Um, in terms of history, I'll give you a quick, like, one-minute breakdown. So, um, this is our first character, my great-grandfather. Um, was that the first, or was this the first? Let's check the history of this. Yeah, this is before game time in 766. So, um, this is our first character. Uh, he was a count, and he died in 808. Um, he was part of the Hermetic Society. Uh, he did become a Master Seducer. Um, and he did write a magnum opus for us. Uh, and he died. He married this woman for no reason. I think they were already married. Or maybe I just married her because I could marry her. Anyway, I, I to be honest, I can't remember. All of this stuff is on VOD, so you can go back and check it out if you want. Um, this was his son. We married him for claims um, to this Carling woman who was not the Queen of Italy when we married her. She just had a weak claim on the Kingdom of Italy. And when we married her, uh, and a bit of backdrop, um, while we were the Count of Barry, the AI created the Holy Roman Empire, right? Um, and then Italy and a few random places, um, including Benevento, which I was part of that duchy, uh, pressed for independence and were successful. They didn't fight a war. He just said, sure, you can be independent, you guys. So Italy was independent. Um, I married that Carling woman and made an alliance with the Holy Roman Empire and then declared war on Italy to press her claim. I think I had, I had declared fought like an independence war against Benevento. I controlled these four territories at the time, I'm pretty sure. Um, we pressed the claim against Italy and our mother becomes the Queen of Italy. Um, immediately afterwards, not maybe not immediately, three or four years later, um, HRE declares war on, because he has a weak claim as well, and it's pressable against our mother. Uh, this is while we are still a little boy, we're still a kid, because our father died a little bit before that happened. Um, So we defend against the HRE. The HRE calls in the Byzantines. We defend against both. Um, we end up hiring an enormous amount of mercenaries, stealing a bunch of money. It was actually pretty, pretty interesting how we managed to work it out. Um, we got lucky, and just as we were about to run out of money, um, they pressed for white peace. They said, sure, like don't worry about it. So we just say, okay, um, and then time goes by. And then, um, I don't think it's him, who was it? I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to find him anymore. Let's check uh, the history of the Kingdom of France. This guy right here, Gerard the Frog, factioned for me to be, take over the HRE because I had a weak claim on the HRE through my mother um, and he factioned to press my claim in the HRE and he won resoundingly so I became the Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire um, 
my father was married to um, the Empress of Basilla of the Roman Empire. Well, I mean, she wasn't the Empress when he got engaged to her. Um, but we assassinated, like, a, a bunch of little Byzantines. We killed... Um, let's see... One, two, three. Oh, no, we killed two. We killed two Byzantine emperors so that she would inherit. Um, and then she squeezed out me. And she got assassinated. Yeah, the frog, the king of France. That's funny, right? Isn't that hilarious? He wasn't the king of France when he pressed the claim. He was like the Duke of Berry or something. Um, but later on, after I took the kingdom of France off of the old Roman Empire, uh, or the old Roman Emperor, I ended up giving it to him as a reward for his service. <clears throat> uh, and that's pretty much present day. Um, that got me control of both of these. I haven't grown nearly as quickly since then. Um, I really hope I'm going to be able to get control of the Arabian Empire Peninsula. Um, I'm not sure how the succession is going to work if I take that over because um, open succession is a Muslim thing only. So I'm not sure if it reverts to the default of my primary title when I take over the empire, if I've got to do some funny business there, if it goes like Agnatic Gavelkind or something. I might end up just taking it over and then destroying it. That wouldn't bother me any much because everyone inside the Arabian Empire du jour um, is going to hate us anyway because they're Muslim. Um, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. So... Why isn't he doing this again? I guess I'll just let him do his thing. We got some Hindu sands coming in. We're almost at the end of our broadcast time. In 109 years, yeah, I was very lucky. I was very lucky. I wish I could say I planned that. In most of my games, I'm not nearly this big this fast. It usually takes me another like 200, 250 years to get this big. So we got uh, a middling nobody, I suppose. I haven't played at Nomads pretty much at all. Um, when I do play as Nomads, like I tend to want to start as low rank as possible. Um, and there are no nomadic counts. There are really only king or emperors and kings. And if you become independent, you're kind of screwed because you can never like declare loyalty to another Khazar, right? The fact that this is all empire titles, I don't know, maybe it makes sense for nomads, but it's pretty difficult. Uh, it's, it's a learning experience anyway. I definitely haven't played them very much at all. All right, so he finally likes me a little bit. Let's check our plot. Below 30 again. We've got a few people we can add here and there. Let's actually organize this by plot power. Um, another mayor. Hey, Tony Macaroni with sauce. How you doing? I'm about to end the stream here in five minutes, so I'm afraid you didn't come in at the best of times. Let's see, that was nine, 15, and there was, so that makes 19. Does that get me over? Yeah, it gets me over 150 just by a little bit. Um, just to make sure that the guy that I am courting right now I don't even see him on here. I'm doing good, man. I'm doing okay. Uh, trying some funny business here. Not really having a lot of success. I've been trying to kill this guy for like... I don't know, 18 years. And just can't seem to get him murdered. So it's a bit of a bummer. Uh...
There we are. Uh, what I'm doing now, Bavaria decided Germany is a silly place and moved to Hungary. So Bavaria ended up conquering a bunch of this territory. And then Bulgaria ended up winning a bunch of territory back. He, I guess he invaded for Bulgaria and Bavaria controlled um, what is mostly now Pannonia, right? Yeah. So when these guys went to invade Bavaria, that's what they snatched up. Of course it's good for me, because I should be able to hit them back. Um, like duchy by duchy. There's just so many targets. Maybe I'm not picking my targets very well when I go to declare holy wars. Uh, let's end the peace here. Or end the war there, pardon me. And group and dismiss all these guys. Um, I'm so an Ireland noob, but watching you is good to learn. Man, I hope that someone can pick up some tips from me. I feel like I learned so much from you guys. Uh, there's all kinds of little idiosyncrasies in this game. Like, I, I feel like me and players like me, we get into ruts where we kind of learn a way that we like to do something um, and don't really explore uh, alternate routes. Like, we figure out some way, and sometimes it's the best way to do something we figure out. That's almost never the case. Normally, we all figure out like a really roundabout way to do something that might be relatively easy. Um, I'll tell you something I did learn today, which I, I really quite enjoy, is being able to mark decisions as important or not important on the intrigue screen, um, so that they pop up here or not, um, is, is something I've never done before. So, like as a hermetic, it really matters to me that immediately when I'm able to write a paper, I'm able to write a paper, and immediately when I'm able to search for ingredients, I'm able to search for ingredients. Um, and by default, these are both marked as um, as unimportant uh, decisions. So you mark them as important, they pop back up. And then there's stuff like restore the papacy in Rome. No, I don't want to. So we can unmark that, and then it disappears. So, uh, so that's something I learned today, as a matter of fact. I think I'm almost 1900 hours, or I'm getting pretty close to 1900. And there are still things I learn about CK2 all the time. General Von Gelra was amazed after your Reddit post that you're one of the only people that plants inheritance around 100 years ahead of time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, how can you plan inheritance 100 years ahead of time when you may not have like the generations for it? Or you just mean what you're going to snatch up and when you're going to snatch up. You know, like, oh, I'm going to go for this, then I'm going to go for that, then I'm going to go for this. Barco Battler, you say you relate to planning into a rut? Yeah. Uh, I meant to say playing into a rut, not planning into a rut. Um, but you get my drift, right? Like, um, if it's not, like, holy wars or inheritance claims... Um, besides fab claiming, it's like I almost don't even know how to grab territory. And I'm, when I'm like pressing claims, um, there's a mechanic whereby you can inherit foreign territory. I don't really understand how that works. I know that some people set up all kinds of inheritances that like as people die, the territory just comes in for free. And uh, I've never been able to figure that out. But uh, we're about five minutes over two hours. So that's the end of the episode for today. Um, like most days, at least recently, I've been trying to stream between 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock Eastern. It just happens to be a pretty good time for me regularly. Um, so I'll see you guys tomorrow uh, around 3 p.m. Uh, take care, everyone, and thanks for joining the stream.